Hey, what's up everybody? This is Osenberg501, and today I want to go over the world tier system for Diablo 4. And a lot of this information is going to be coming from Max Roll, so I'll have that linked in the description. This is one of the only places you can find all of the specific information laid out for world tiers, and most of that information is coming from a content creator playtest that was done a few months ago. So keep in mind that this information can change before the launch of the game. And world tiers are going to play a pretty substantial role in Diablo 4, and not only just from increasing the difficulty to make pretty much everything viable in the end game, but also just from the item drops you're able to obtain. Because once you get into the higher difficulties, you can actually get new augmented versions of gear, and some specific uniques are only going to drop at the highest difficulties. And you're going to see a decent bit of similarities between the world tier system of Diablo 4 and the torment system of Diablo 3, but I do think that the world tier system has been upgraded in a lot of ways compared to the torment system and I think it's generally going to be a very good spot to start off Diablo 4 with. And at a baseline, world tiers are going to increase the difficulty of pretty much everything in the world. They're going to give you better drops, more XP, more gold, and then at the later world tiers you're able to get different augmented versions of pieces of gear and you'll unlock the ability to get some new specific pieces of gear as well. But there is one big piece of the world tier system that I'm not 100% sure sure on and that is some specifics about unlocking higher world tiers because world tier one and two you can choose between when you start the game but you have to do some specific content to unlock world tier three through five now the developers did talk about this in an interview where it was said you would have to defeat some very difficult bosses to unlock the next world tier but going specifically off of the max roll information which was from that content creator test and these show that you have to complete a specific dungeon on a specific difficulty to unlock that next world tier. So I'm not certain if maybe the world bosses just weren't implemented fully during this test or if maybe these big end game bosses are specifically in that dungeon on that difficulty or if there's going to be some different version of these dungeons that has that much more difficult boss at the end specifically to unlock the next world tier. Not exactly sure how that's going to work because because also we had a ton of leaks from the NDA restricted endgame beta where a ton of people talked about these bosses you have to defeat to unlock the next world tier. So I'm not 100% certain how that's going to end up playing out, but the general philosophy is you're going to have to defeat something very difficult to unlock that next world tier. So it's not like Diablo 3 where you just went and clicked on a setting and it would put you in the next torment level. You actually have to complete some potentially really difficult content to get into the higher difficulties. And that's easily one of my favorite things about this version of this type of system. Having to actually prove your worth, make sure your build's actually good enough, then go defeat a hard boss or a hard dungeon to then unlock the next difficulty is much better than just having it be a setting change in a menu. It feels much more organic and would be much more fun actually having to challenge your build to keep gearing up and increasing the difficulty. And in some of those leaks from from the NDA restricted endgame beta, a lot of people were saying these bosses were pretty easy and I did see some mixed messages on if the bosses were easy just because they weren't tuned correctly or if the bosses were easy just because their mechanics were easy. Because if we're going off that endgame beta until the point of the official launch of Diablo 4, that'll be over six months so any balancing is not going to be even close to being completed but if a boss is just boring and the mechanics are bad or easy, that's a much harder design choice to have to change than just tuning some numbers. So I'm very much hoping that these bosses are interesting and they actually crank up the difficulty. I really don't want these bosses or dungeons to just be super easy and just something you have to go do to get the next difficulty. I hope it's truly difficult and you actually have to have a coherent and usable build to be able to get into the next difficulty. And we do have a lot of the specifics for these different world 
tiers. So like I mentioned, World Tier 1 and World Tier 2, which is Adventure and Veteran, are able to be played from the second you create your character. So for Adventure or World Tier 1, it's recommended for new players to Diablo, enemies are easy to defeat, and drops are average. But then if you choose Veteran or World Tier 2, this is recommended for Diablo Veterans, enemies will challenge you, it has better drops, and 20% increased XP and gold. So most likely, if you're someone that's played any other ARPGs or any other Diablo games, you'll most likely choose Veteran because it does give pretty good buffs compared to Adventurer, but that also depends on how much more difficult it is. Because there could potentially be a world where World Tier 2 is just so much more difficult that even experienced and skilled players aren't going to play in that when they first start off a character because it just take too long to kill enemies or you die too much, and it will just end up making leveling up and gearing more difficult than being in world tier one. Now, after you've chosen one of those two difficulties, you're actually not able to unlock World Tier 3 until you hit level 50. And level 50 is also where you're going to unlock the Paragon system and generally what level you're going to be when you complete the main campaign. So you're going to have to go through all of that until you can start to go into World Tier 3, which is Nightmare difficulty. And to unlock this, you're going to need to complete the Cathedral of Light dungeon in World Tier 2, and this is recommended for level 50. And like I mentioned, I'm not sure if these specific bosses to get into the next world tier are going to be in those specific dungeons, or if there's going to be another challenge, or if this is just maybe a placeholder because those bosses weren't done. Not exactly sure like we went over. And then also in world tier 3, champion monsters now have a chance to appear. So once you get in this world tier is when champion monsters can actually start to spawn. You're now able to get sacred items and they have a low chance of dropping. And this is the augmented versions of items. I mentioned before. Now there's not actually any official information on what sacred and ancestral items are because the only people that have been able to obtain these in game were from that NDA restricted end game beta. So the information isn't going to be 100%. Take all that information with a grain of salt. But the information I could find leaked from that beta is that these are essentially higher stated versions of normal items. And I wasn't actually able to get concrete information on if these could only be legendary unique items or if any items could be sacred, but it's seeming like they're generally just higher rolled versions. And most likely what I'm thinking is that sacred items are just going to increase the cap of how these items could roll. So maybe a normal non-sacred item could roll 100 to 500. Maybe the sacred item could roll like 100 to 600. And then ancestral items, which you'll unlock in later world tiers, would most likely likely have a much higher low end roll, but the same high end roll as sacred items. That would be my best guess of how these items would actually work. And then you also unlock the Nightmare Sigil system in World Tier 3 as well, and this is what allows you to turn dungeons into Nightmare Dungeons. So you get a Nightmare Sigil, whatever dungeon that applies to, you go to that dungeon, use a sigil, turns that dungeon into a Nightmare Dungeon, has different affixes and modifiers that'll give you more gear and change up the dungeon essentially making it an end game version of that dungeon. Then players will gain 100% XP bonus and non-physical resistances are reduced by 20%. And this is something that I don't think we really saw in Diablo 3, if I'm not mistaken, but this is definitely something that is going to heavily affect how you're gearing up your character. If now all of your magical resistances are reduced by 20%, that's going to mean you're going to have to focus on regaining more of those defensive stats or you're just going to be dying way too much. And next up we have a world tier 4 or hell difficulty and this says it's unlocked by completing the fallen temple dungeon in world tier 3 which is recommended at level 60. Sacred items drop more frequently and you now have the ability to obtain rare nightmare sigils which unseal more difficult challenges and from the information we have it's seeming like every dungeon is in a different bracket for nightmare sigils so there's the first bracket that a certain amount of dungeons are in there's a second bracket which is what these rare nightmare sigils would be and that has a certain amount of dungeons and then there'll be another bracket with all of the other dungeons in so not every dungeon could have a rare nightmare sigil applied to it It'll 
would only be a specific set of dungeons. Then players gain 150% bonus XP and a non-physical resistances are reduced by 30%. Now this wouldn't be stacked on top of the 20%, this would just be 30% total. And then finally, we have World Tier 5 Torment difficulty. And this is unlocked by completing the Archives of Asalia dungeon in World Tier 4, recommended level 70. And now, Ancestral items have a low chance of dropping, and we went over how I think that system is going to play out, but it's seeming like at a baseline, Sacred and Ancestral items are going to be higher rolled or potentially higher rolled versions of normal items. Then, new unique items can be found, and if you don't know how you Uniques are going to work. Uniques are going to be incredibly rare items, but they are going to be ridiculously strong. They specifically want unique items to be things that you don't find often at all, no matter what, but when you find them, there's something that's just ridiculously strong. Then players gain 250% bonus XP and non-physical resistances are reduced by 40%. And that's pretty much all the information we have on World Tiers 4, Diablo 4. And like I mentioned, I think the way they're going about this version of this type of system is better than the Torment system from Diablo 3. Like I mentioned, I really like how you have to complete a difficult challenge to get into the next difficulty. Whether that be a singular boss or whether that be a dungeon, maybe with a boss at the end. Whatever it ends up being on launch, that's one of my favorite parts of this version of this type of system. And on 50-50 on if sacred and ancestral items are going to play out to be a good system, I think it is generally good to keep giving you stronger items to chase as you get into the higher difficulties. It's also somewhat of a balancing thing where if you didn't have the opportunity to get stronger, your character may just not be able to be strong enough to get into the next difficulty. But I do think that's a system that we're going to have to actually play with once the game's released to actually see if it's something that players generally like. And another thing I do really like is on World Tier 5, there are new uniques that can be found just in that World Tier. I really like that there are going to be some super ultra omega rare items that can only be found in World Tier 5 that are probably going to be ridiculously strong. So I do think overall that this system is a really good spot to start off with. I think this is a really good version of the system to build upon in future seasons, future expansions, and just future updates to Diablo 4. Because I think the best way they could go about the original launch of Diablo 4 is to make a bunch of really good systems and then build upon those systems with future seasons and future updates. I don't think we need every system in Diablo 4 to be perfect on release and to be super complex and everything else on top of it. I think just having good, understandable systems that are fun to play with on launch and then building them out in future updates is going to be the best way to go about creating a live service ARPG. But that's all I want to go over for World Tears for Diablo 4. So subscribe if you want to see more Diablo 4 or other videos. Leave a like if you liked the video. Comment down below what you guys think about the World Tears of Diablo 4. And thanks for watching.